Good morning. Good morning. Glory to God. It's great to be here. And uh, been here a few times. I think it's my fifth time, sixth time to be here over the years, many years. And uh, it's a blessing because of Jesus. Amen. That's why I'm here. Jesus changed my life from uh, on drugs, drinking, partying, smoking, trying to find satisfaction in the world, but I couldn't find it. But then I, I accepted Jesus Christ. My life turned around, and Jesus gave me peace. You know, that's why we pray for our leaders of our land, that you might live a, a quiet and peaceable life, right? And so you better be praying, you better be voting, you better be getting involved. Because we want to live a quiet and peaceful life, right? But that's what I saw in Jesus. He changed my life. He said I could have life and that more abundantly. I like what your pastor of the scripture, John 10, 10, but it, in the Amplified it says that you may have life. It doesn't mean you're going to. Now you have eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, but now in this life, you may have that life if you want it. Because a lot of times in, in America, you see people that are Christians, but they're not living that life that he's talking about that abundant life. And so th that's what really John 10:10 10, 10 is what you want to have is that life and it says that you might may have it in abundance to the full till it overflows, right? In abundance to the full till it overflows that you may have it. So you wonder why aren't you having it? Always. Well, you should. And it's available. And that's why we go to church. We come to church. So it's a blessing to be able to, to minister the word this morning. And um, I'm going to mention that one way is to listen to CDs. Listen to the word. Meditate on the word day and night. That you can renew your mind to get rid of your stinking thinking. You know, get, find out what God says in his word and do that. And I have uh, CDs out there. I'll just mention real quick. I have some CDs out there. They're $6 a piece. If you buy three of them, um, you can get three of them for $12. So if you want that, I have three different ones. And any athletics, anybody in athletics here? Runners? You got any runners? Team Jesus? Anyway, if you want to wear these at, at the gym, it's a good thing to open their eyes. But Team Jesus, triple seven. And it's uh, in God they trust, and they shall run. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Um, the reason I have these is I started a Team Jesus. I've been running half marathons. So I ran th three half marathons this year, and uh, it's 13.1 miles. And I started at 50 years old running uh, long distances. And next year I plan to run a full marathon but glorifying Jesus. It's amazing what a, a witness tools those shirts can be, and th they always are saying something about it. And, um, but it's, it says that you shall believe, John 3.15. People know about John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave, but how about John 3.16, 3.15, it says you must believe. You got to believe in him. So anyway, that's those shirts I have at the book table also. Um, good for working out or running if you're going to run. And, uh, you know, we need to get involved. We need to be spirit, soul, and body, right? Spirit, soul, and body that occupy until Jesus comes back. We need to get ready and, and prepare and plan till he comes back. Well, this morning, uh, let's, let's pray, and I'll get in the Word. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your Word, that you would quicken this Word. I thank you that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that it would be enlightened to know the hope of your calling and the riches of your glory in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for ears to hear what your Spirit say in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, turn your Bibles. I'm going to go off my little pad here. Um which has all, all of it. I have a lot more versions, and they're putting it up on the screen, too. It's nice. Well, if you turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And I um, wanted to let you know that there's, you ever heard about a, a lumberjack out in Tennessee? He was chopping down trees. And so somebody told him he should go down and get a chainsaw. He could do better. So he went down to the, the store, local store, and he bought a chainsaw, and he went back, and he used that thing like half a day, and he, he said, this thing doesn't work, and he took it back and asked the guy, that thing, I want it, my money back. It doesn't even work. Did you ever start it up? He goes, start it up? What do you mean start it up? He's trying to chop down trees with the chainsaw without it started. Wouldn't work. And so a lot of times what we're trying to do is, is do things without starting them up. And, and this morning what I want to minister on is, is, is your edge sharp. Sharpen your edge. You have to sharpen your edge because if it's dull, like Acts, it says in, look in Ecclesiastes 10, verse 10. What does it say? It says, if your axe is dull and you don't sharpen it, you have to work harder to use it. Same principle. In the good news it says, if your iron has no edge, he does not make it sharp, then he has to put out more strength, more effort. You have to put out more strength, more effort. But wisdom makes it go well. In the basic Bible, it says if the axe is blunt and one doesn't sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But skill brings success. I like what the Message Bible says, the duller the axe, the harder the work. Use your head, use your head, the more brains, less muscle. In the Message Bible. <clears throat> so this morning we're talking about sharpening your edge and, and using the tools that you've been given. God's given us many tools. But if you don't use them, if you don't use like the lumberjack didn't know to start up the, the chainsaw and he cut down a lot of trees. The same principle. If you don't use the weapons that you've been given, prayer, Praying in tongues. The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds. And so we've got to be sharp. We've got to sharpen our edge. You got it. We get dull. We get, we stop. Maybe you don't pray as much as you used to when you first got saved. Maybe you don't read the Bible as much as when you first got saved. But if you'll get in the Word again, if you'll get in there and, and sharpen, sharpen your blade, sharpen your blade, which is the sword, is the Word of God, which is, right, is coming out of your mouth. A two-edged sword, it says the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. But if you become dull, if you're not speaking the Word to your situation in your life, it's going to be hard. It's going to be harder for you. It's going to be harder. And so what you want to do is, is make sure that you sharpen your edge. You, th you think you've tried it, but it's not working. I like what it says in, in the Bible in Luke 5.5. 5, but Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and we've caught nothing. But he says, Never, nevertheless, at your word, they'll put in the net on the other side. Jesus said, just cast it on the other side of your boat. What's that do? We've been, we've been fishing all night, and you're telling us just put it on the other side? And it's, so he said, but nevertheless, at your word. And then what it said in, in verse 6, basically, they caught more fish so much they couldn't even take it all in with one net, one boat. They had to call the other boats. But that's what the difference is between being dull and being sharp. When God tells you to do it, it's, it works. It will work. 
And so a simple <clears throat> in obedience at your word, Lord, that's what he said. They caught a great multitude of fish, so much that the net was breaking, but they've been fishing all night. Yet at his word, and that's what we need, his word. I like what it says in uh, 2 Kings chapter it's 6 and 17. And Elisha prayed, and the Lord pray, open his eyes that I may see. Then the Lord opened the servant, the young man's eyes, and he saw, and he saw a mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around about Elisha. A lot of times we don't see it. We don't see what God's trying to do. But if, if we will just sharpen a little bit our edge, maybe you're going to just pray a little bit more or pray more effectively. But if, if you're, you know, then there's a combination of things. Does your faith work if you're in unforgiveness? If you're not walking in love? All the tools that we have, we have to use those. And, and so you got to realize that you got to sharpen. If you're not walking in love, it's not going to work. If you're not in faith, it's not going to work. If you're not in belief. So all these things that you know you've been, we've been saved for a long time, but we got to start really working them. And a lot of times it's just small adjustments that we make to sharpen that edge. It takes a little bit more to, to sharpen your edge. What are you going to do to sharpen your edge? And what, what you will do is ask God for wisdom. Yes. You think you've tried everything, but it's not working. With God, it works. It always works. What is uh, Philippians 3.17? It says, uh, brothers, part, uh, pattern your lives after mine. And notice whose else lives up to my example. So Paul's saying, follow me as I follow Christ, right? And, and you ever seen uh, birds flying in the sky, how they make these V patterns? Why do they fly that way? So they can cut the edge flying through the sky. And they line up in a V pattern. And, and they, they break the wind barrier. They break the wind having a V pattern. And you'll see then they roll around, the next bird flies around, they take turns. Because they, being up in the cutting edge, the front of that V pattern, that's using the most effort. And so what they do is they drop around. And that's why it's, you know, it, it, it's good to be in church, good to be around other people in church because they build you up. Because you see their faith, you see their strength, you see what they're doing, and it should encourage you to do more, to sharpen your edge, to do more than you have been able to do in your life. And that's what I believe that if our life is no better than the world's, why are they going to want to have what you have? Right? Amen. Our life, we should be out on whatever field we're in, we should be in the cutting edge. You can, you can be in the cutting edge and, and doing new things. They don't teach you to think outside of education. Entrepreneur, you need, we need to think outside of, of the box, so to speak, and get outside of it. But if, if you're not sharp if, with God's Word, you're not going to have those witty inventions, those ideas that are outside of what they're trying to put you in this box. We want to get outside of that. James in uh, chapter 1, 1 through 5, it, ask God, right? Ask God yes. that He'll give you wisdom in your situation. We got to have patterns in our life. We all have patterns, right? So we need to break out of those patterns to change the way we're living. And we know the only way you can change the way you're living is change the way you're talking, right? Your mouth. 
is an edge, is a sword, either blessing and cursing is going to come out of your mouth, right? What's coming out of your mouth? What kind of edge do you have? Are you, are you speaking blessing or are you speaking cursing? And that's what we need to be speaking the cutting edge for, for our life to cut through all the junk that we have to deal with. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome it. How did Jesus overcome it? By the Word. By speaking. And the Word of God is quicker, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. It cuts between what your soul and your spirit. You can divide everything. You can divide it all up. You can see if that's just my own thing or is that God's thing. And if you'll speak the word, if you'll cut, if you'll sharpen your tongue with the word, you'll divide it. You'll, you'll cut it up. You'll see through it, right? Sharpen your edge. Listen to God. God has... So much for our lives, I believe. We don't want to get to heaven and say, is that what you wanted us to do? Is that what you had planned for us? Because we know it's above, beyond what you can ask or think. According to his power, that's, his power is working in us. So God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us, right? You need to be sharp with your word, with your mouth, with renewing your mind so that you can cut through all this stuff that's going on in your life. Listen to God. The main thing is listen to God and change the way you're thinking. If you listen to God, then you'll speak the way God says. What God says you're going to speak. You're not going to speak all this other stuff. If you're listening to the wrong things, you're going to speak the wrong things. If you're listening to the right things, you'll speak the right things. Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added unto you. All these other things. And you know the eyes of the Lord, 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says... The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for those whose heart is towards Him. Looking for your heart that's towards Him. Why? So He can show Himself mighty on your behalf. Don't you want God to show yourself Himself mighty on your behalf? I do. Amen. Is your heart towards him? He's looking for it. He's seeking. He's, he's searching the hearts. And he wants to know. Where's our heart? Where is it? And I believe that that, that power will be manifest on your behalf. When your heart is according to the word. According to the word, it will be manifest towards you. We know th that I talked about it, that changing the way you're thinking will change the way you're living. Garbage in, garbage out. The computers, giggo. If you put garbage in, garbage is going to come out. What you put in is going to come out. So that's why if we program ourselves with the Word of God, if we put the Word of God in our situation, it's going to come out. That abundant life that he talks about. Life to the full, till it overflows, the abundance. So that in everything that we do, we have everything that we need. We have no lack. David says that no lack. Those who serve him will have no lack. No want. How many, you, we shouldn't have wants because God supplies all of our needs. Right? Everything that we have need of. Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is living and powerful. Right? Living and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword is what I talked about. Piercing even the division of your soul and your spirit, joints and marrow. 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's your, that's your edge. That's your edge. Really, as a Christian, you can either be a carnal Christian or you can be a spirit-led Christian because the, the Word of God will get down and it'll separate, it'll separate things for you. You'll be able to see things easier in the Word, through the Word, and you'll be able to lack nothing. I like what it says in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.12. It says, lacking nothing, that you may be honest towards them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. Wouldn't, isn't that a good thing, to be lack of nothing? Finances, your health is, you're healthy and whole, long life. And I'm telling you, you've got to prepare as you get older. Jesus could come back tomorrow, but he said, occupy until I come back. And spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Amen. That we're supposed to be that way. So you need to prepare and plan as you get old. And 120 years is what Genesis 6-3 promises man. Your days will be 120 years. Amen. That's a long time. Amen. But you want to be healthy that long. If you're going to live that long. I did one, one church. A lady was 109 years old. Just got assisted living at 109. That's amazing, but she could think, clear, ask questions, everything. It was, she lived to 113 wow. out in California there at Seal Beach. Amazing. But you can live, have long life. Amen. That's part of keeping your edge sharp, keeping on your game. You've got to do it. You've got to keep sharp. How do you spend your time and your money? How are you spending your time and your money? Here's one, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be tricked by false words. Evil company does damage good behavior. The basic Bible says, uh, don't let anyone deceive you. Associating with bad people will ruin decent people. Amen. Example, when I, when I was a little kid in Hawaii, I used to, um, I was surfing um, when I was 8, 9, 10, 11, and I'd go out and hang out with these kids, and they were all, they'd smoke pot. But I didn't. I wouldn't do it. No way, my dad, no way, I'm not going to do it. But as I hung around them, the more I hung around them, until eventually when I was a teenager, I started smoking pot. Because you can't hang around people and not become like them. And so to be sharper, if you're going to be sharper, you better be hanging around people that are sharper than you. Doing more than you're doing. And that will help sharpen you. That's, so who you hang around will affect you. It's going to affect your life. So you have to maintain a sharp edge. How are you going to maintain it or you lose it? It's kind of like an athlete that thinks nobody can pass me up, nobody can beat me. And they slack off. Guess what? The younger guy comes up and passes them up. I look at um, government motors. They have, you know, how many cars? I'm driving a foreign car <laughs> in the parking lot because <laughs> they build them better, right? But America's like, was number one with the auto industry. And all these cars, I remember when they came over, the first Honda that came over there, I was laughing at it because it looked like a little, just a little motorcycle motor in this car. 
but I'm driving one now, <laughs> right now. So that's the same way with our lives. We need to stay on the cutting edge. We need to realize, and it was an American guy that went over there and taught Japan. It was uh, um, America, Dr. Deming, that went over there and taught them about the just-in-time and how to uh, have the quality control and everything to build the cars. America didn't want to listen. So a lot of times, Americans, we don't want to listen. We don't want to read the directions. We build it, and then we read the, oh, if it doesn't work, then you read the directions. We, got, we think we have it all figured out. Well, we need to get in our word, in the Bible, and it tells us. That's the, the Bible is God's model for us, right? And so maintain your sharp edge or you lose it. Have you ever been so busy that you miss something? We all do, right? You get, if you get too busy, and that's being under, under Satan's joke. You don't want to be under Satan's joke. He wants to get you busy, so either you're going to be productive or you're just busy. Sometimes we're so busy, we're not really effective. So you might have to change the processing, what you're doing, how you're doing it. I know one guy that was in business, and he was working a lot. God told him, you're working too much. You're gonna, if, you'll, if you'll slow down, you'll make more money. So just because you're working a lot doesn't mean you're going to do better. But we, we think that, oh, if we do all this, then we'll be better. So that's why you need to listen to your spirit, listen to God, and find out what's, what is really am I supposed to be doing to be productive. And you'll have more time. We all have the same time. Why are some doing more than others? When you lose your edge, you begin to miss out on the blessings in your life. When you lose your sharp edge, you begin to miss out on the blessings of God. Because I believe God's trying to bless you all the time. Amen. Trying to bless us all the time. But if we get so busy, then we don't really listen in our spirit. We, listen, we, we got all this stuff going on in our head. We got all this information, all these things in our head, but we're not really being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And that's where we need to be. We need to listen and be led by the Spirit of God. <clears throat> and then we will be led into those places that God has for us. Maybe a new job, promotion, invention, maybe start your own business. Many different ways that God will, will lead you. David said that um, King David was, it says, David, after having been useful in his own generation, in accordance with God's purpose, that's what his testimony was. God, David's generation, he, he was in accordance, it says in uh, Acts 13, 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. But another one says, having been useful in his own generation in accordance with God's purpose, did fall asleep and was gathered with his forefathers and, and died, decayed. So are you going to be useful in your generation? That's what I want to be useful in my generation. I want to affect people in my generation. And all of us have that opportunity. All of us have it. So what are you going to do? What, what do you think? Why, would, why do I need to sharpen my edge? Why, all that I'm going through. Well, most of the men in the Bible, men and women, went through m multiple things in their life. You could have excuses why you're not doing this, why you're not doing that. But the people in the Bible went through 
all kinds of things. The Apostle Paul went through so much, yet he did God's will. Yet he followed through. And that's what you and I have to do. I believe that, that we need to persevere through all these tribulations, all these things that come against you. And there's always a way, always, somebody's always going to say no, but you can always ask someone else. Amen. For instance, I was, um, my company, I have, my company has some, a lot of properties, real estate, and the banks would not loan, they won't loan you money. So you go to another bank, you go to another bank, you go to another bank, until you can get somebody that's going to loan you the money. You know, a lot of times people are told no so many times. But there's somebody out there that will help you. Somebody will work with you. There's always a way. If you, if you find a way, and that's what I believe with God, we know there's always a way. A lot of times we get dull, though, and we, we don't, we don't want to do what we have to do. We don't want to do everything. So you can, uh, Proverbs 8, 12, it says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and of devices. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Witty inventions, that's what we need in these times, in these days. Witty inventions, new ideas. <laughs> And that's what God will give you in your field, in your situation. I believe it. There's always, look outside of, a lot of times you just got to get out of that perspective you're in. Sometimes you're, you're stuck in a rut and you got to get out of that for a while to see differently. You're seeing things in one, you got to get out, maybe get out of town for a day, get out of town and, and look at it differently than just being stuck in the rut and thinking, there's no way this is going to change. But just a little bit, God can turn it around. A suddenly can happen. God will do suddenlies in your life. And suddenly it changed. That's what, in our lives, we need to have we need to have that change. We need to have cutting edge. We need to get out there, and that's what God will do for us. Ask for the wisdom. Iron sharpeneth iron, Proverbs 27, 17. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Just as iron sharpens iron, friends sharpen the minds of each other. Talking about renewing our mind. Earlier we talked about renewing your mind. But to be on the cutting edge, your mind, you, you can sharpen it being around these other people. Reading people that are doing more than you're doing. And, and learning and letting God speak to you beyond what the, where they're at. And, and so if we start changing what we're thinking about, we're going to change what we're speaking about. And I believe that's how we, we sharpen ourselves with the Word of God. Is a two-edged sword. It's sharper, and it's more powerful. And it cuts through all the stuff that we're hearing in our mind. The thoughts that come to you are not always godly. And that's why you need to know, is this God or is this not God? Well, with the Word of God, you can discern it. You can discern if it's right, if it's wrong, if it's God, if it's not. And that's what we need to sharpen our edge. Friends sharpens the minds of each other. Find the plan and purpose. You got to find the plan and purpose God has for you to succeed. We should be on the cutting edge in our field. What do you do? Ask God for wisdom. We read in Ecclesiastes 10.10 10, that it said if the axe is dull, work is going to be hard. 
You've been saying, my work is so hard, it's, I don't get anything done. Well, start changing. Sharpen your edge. There's another way. There's a different way to do it. And cha make those adjustments in your life. Find out, ask God, show me. How can I do this better? How can I do it different? I remember years ago I was um, working at a hotel as a night auditor and there was actually a um, night audit. We had this, I had to do everything manually. And then, but I, I went to a, I got laid off and I believe God got a better job for me. The same day I went over and got a new job at a new hotel and I was doing it all computerized. So I was running these reports instead of manually having to write everything out the computer would print it out and you could find out where the error was, where the audit was wrong, if they put in the, if the desk clerk put in the wrong money or wrong amount, it would show up right away. And so the, there's things in your job or your life where it easily God can say, look it, do it this way, do it that way. When I was on my, uh, worked in the aerospace industry, I, I used to always get money bonuses for writing up little suggestions and your jobs probably have that employee suggestion you fill it out and I'd get you know from a hundred bucks to three four hundred I think I got five hundred bucks one time just for writing a little thing up and telling them this if we do that this way it's gonna save money it's gonna tell them why and what they need to change and they did it and it saved money and I got rewarded for it so you can do the same in your life Maybe you're not at a company where they do that, but you can be re rewarded in your own life Amen. by getting a, another job, a better job. Amen. Increase. And that's what I believe it'll do when, you, when we actually sharpen our edge, our spirit, our mind, our tongue, which is the Word of God, which is, you know, God says, if this book of law, if you'll meditate in it day and night, then you will be what you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success and that's what I believe we may have that John 10 10 Jesus said I came that you may have life and that more abundantly it says you may it's not a it's not a something that's going to be forced upon you you know the blessing of God the Abraham the blessings of Abraham to tap into those blessings we have to be at the right place, at the right time. And if you're going to receive, you got to believe. If you're going to receive, you got to walk in love. If you're going to receive, you're going to, you know, there's so many things that we can, that's where we can sharpen our edge because you might be doing one thing and think, why is it not working? Well, there's just one situation that you change and it works right away. Willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. Real simple, right? A small adjustment, but it will make a big difference. What is your, the last thing is your expectation. You have to expect. Expect. Your expectation. It's like a quarterback throwing the football. If he doesn't have a receiver out there expecting to get the ball, where is he going to throw it? And you're, God's trying to bless you and throw something. Expect God to show you how to improve your life in every area. I like what the expectation of the vines, it says, reaching out in readiness to receive something. Are you looking for something? Are you believing for something? Are you expecting for something? That's where we need to be. You need to be on the cutting edge in your life for what you're expecting. You need to be there. It's in accordance, Philippians 1.20, it says, in accordance to your expectation. David says, wait, my soul, wait upon God. My expectation is from you. Yes. Nothing else. Yes. Our expectation has to be on God. Yes. Because a person, a place, or a thing is not going to give you that the same satisfaction that God will give you. 
Finally, your edge is, is means to provoke or to urge yourself, ignite, and that which pushes you on with a sharp point. It, it, it's like a, a prod, a cow, cattle. You know, if you're sharp, you'll be right out there. You'll be doing, you'll be changing. You'll be doing the things that you need to be doing. And it's real simple, just by making small adjustments, I believe. Little adjustments to sharpen that edge. It doesn't take much to, to get the knife and sharpen it up a little bit more, but it, a, a sharp knife cuts so much easier than a dull blade. And that's what, in our lives, we can be more effective if we'll just prepare just a little bit more. Sharpen it up just a little bit and then it'll just cut through all that garbage all that lies all the the camouflage of all the the enemy tries to put all this things in your mind and if you're in the word it's just going to take it away it's just going to you're renewed in your mind to the word of god such that these things won't affect you won't hold you back glory to god Let's all, let's all just say, Father God, Father God I, will I will sharpen my edge. Sharpen my edge. I'll, make I'll make the adjustments that need to be made. Need to be made. Thank, you, Thank you, Father. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Show, me show me what needs to be adjusted. Needs to be adjusted. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.